Hello there. I don't know about you guys, but I potentially see a little bit of jealousy coming in from Walt because I think Gus and Mike might become to see um, that there is some value in Jesse and begin to start using him and that might begin to start causing a little bit of a stir in Walt's personality because we already see him becoming agitated and you know a little bit anxious that he's not in the loop on things with Jesse and Gus and Mike might start to begin to use Jesse a lot more frequently without you know Walt's permission or Walt not knowing what's going on and that's gonna make for some fun drama so what's going on guys my name is Ellie Moses a 23 year old lore film student here from Sydney Australia shooting a shot baby and we are making our way through the Breaking Bad series at a fast pace baby we are up to episode 6 now of season 4 this one is titled Cornered so I cannot wait to get into it Hank is getting closer as well possibly discovering a connection with Los Poyos Hermanos and the meth um, sort of kingpin going on at the moment, the meth situation going on at the moment in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So yeah, let's waste no more time. Let's get into reaction. Let's have some fun with this thing. I love this show. Let's go. I like how we're getting a bit more of an insight into the drug deliveries as well with Los Pollos Hermanos and the packaging and things like that. We had that... With the previous episode, I believe, with Mike as well. Yeah, these guys came prepared now. They're learning from their mistakes, whoever these guys are. <laughs> there might be a new player in town. Man, that guy shot, got shot from... It's either he got shot from underneath here or like above. Oh, the bullet could've gone. Uh. <laughs> and they're not even eating lunch. They're just having a morning snack. That's recess to them. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that scene over the last few days. And you know how when Skylar heard that she immediately, you know, started love making to Walt and things like that. And obviously they had sex and yeah, it was really passionate and things like that. But I was thinking to myself, I'm like, Skylar would usually be the one to think, yo, Walt, what was that? What was that? Why were you saying that? Were you in danger? What was going to happen? Like, I, was, I thought we were going to get the investigative Skylar that episode. I didn't, I don't think I said it in my reaction. And I don't think it's up yet. But um, I don't think I mentioned that I, I expected Skylar to act a bit differently rather than just go for the passionate lovemaking. <laughs> I, I thought she was going to pull up well and say, hang on a second. There's probably more to this. Why are you saying this? Uh, it's me. I, I just wanted to say that I, I was thinking about you. Who killed him? Was that the people you work for? Definitely not. Was it somebody who, yeah. at some point, might want to do the same to you? Yeah, we drugs, girl. No, but then, but then I was remembering your black eye, your uh, business disagreement that you don't want to talk about. <laughs> talk about any of this. Ever. The firewall. All right? Church and state. That's how we need to approach this thing. And then I remembered the message you left me the other day. Here we go. When you said you loved me. Investigative Skylar returns. When I heard that, I thought that maybe you, I don't know, that you were regretting what's happened between us and i get that this After last night I this woman would track down something you did in the 1920s and find a connection in the 2020s <laughs> she'll be like this is connected to this <laughs> well i think you're scared 
I think that message was some kind of goodbye. No. It's I think last night was a cry for help. Oh, Jesus. Cry for help. I think some part of you wants Hank to catch you. Wow. That is just... That is... That is it. Exactly. Yes. You're like <laughs> Dr. Joyce Brothers. <laughs> God. <laughs> if he caught you, at least this would all be over. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, a tremendous weight just lifted off of me. Now I, I understand myself. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I know what it could do to this family, but if it's the only real choice we have, if it's either that or you getting shot when you open your front door, hear about the you're police. not some hardened criminal, Walt. You are in over your head. Mm -hmm. That's what we tell them. That's the truth. That is not the truth. Of course it is. School teacher cancer, desperate for money. Okay, we're done here. Roped into working for, unable to even quit. You told me that yourself, Walt. Jesus, what was I thinking? Walt, please, let's both of us stop trying to justify this whole thing and admit you're in danger. Who is it you think you see? Yo, this is a... Do you know how much I make a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Do you know what would happen if I suddenly decided to stop going into work? A business big enough that it could be listed on the NASDAQ goes belly up. Disappears. It ceases to exist without me. No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. He's the Grim Reaper. <laughs> I was about to say, I was about to say, um, I don't know if you guys will agree with me in this, but I was about to say, this is not the conversation you want to be waking up to after a hangover. Like, obviously, Walt became increasingly agitated as the scene went on. But you begin the scene with Skylar entering the room and you have that shot um, angled up as Skylar walks in and Walt's sleeping on his bed. He wakes up, he slowly rises, he slowly rises, you know, because of the hangover, then sits on the edge of the bed. And then you have that shot, the steady shot, sort of like the medium shot of him and Skylar, you know, sitting on the edge of the bed, talking to one another, sort of like a level playing field right there. And then as the scene goes on, as Skylar begins to question Walt's integrity and start to question everything um, and start to pose these questions that begin to increasingly, you know, um, um, uh, put Walt on tilt, um, Walt begins to, his temper increases and he starts to get more agitated, more angry and more fierce. And then his level um, and tone of voice begins to rise. And then so does he, his body language, um, he begins to rise. And then he asserts dominance in the scene as he walks, takes off his clothes. Um, then he, you see the, again, rise in, vo uh, rise in uh, change of tone in his voice. And then he starts to sort of start raging at Skylar and start to assert his dominance over it. And you see the level changes in sort of like the shot where it's focusing on Skylar and it's sort of like at Walt's tricep. Uh, it's like uh, not an over the head shoulder shot, um, but it's like on his tricep and it's Skylar sitting on the bed looking up at Walt uh, to see that like, you know, Walt has sort of um, switched the levels in this scene and asserted dominance over Skylar. And Skylar just saw a little bit of Heisenberg right there, in my opinion. <laughs> Funny, I just watched Oppenheimer last week <laughs> and Heisenberg was in it. And when he was mentioned in the film, Shadow I thought of this. Boss has to be tough. Has to say no to people. <laughs> has to make cashiers wipe down cars even if they don't want to. Seeing a bit of parallels maybe with his speech right here. Can you and Gus. Tough, Walter? I, I'm sure you can handle. And if not, you can always call your wife. He's going to get punched up here, man. I swear he was going to. Man, never. Don't question Walt's manhood like that. <laughs> always sticky. Yeah, no problem. As is.
Bogdan. As is. Yo, yo, man. <laughs> you have to be tough. <laughs> you gotta learn to say no. <laughs> yo, Bogdan went from a 20 million asking price to what was that, 800k? <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> I feel sorry for him. You know what? After the GFC, 800k cash or like 800k up front might not be that bad. Notice how Jesse's shaking still. Yeah, there we go. Close up. <laughs> They're two very different things. Not really. Gambling addiction is a sickness. You can't Listen, what is going on with me is not about some disease. It's about choices. Choices that I have made. Choices I stand by. I love this show. The conversations are so good. The writing's fantastic. And when you company moving back in, are you? And when you company great writing with great acting, it just m makes for great artistry, in my opinion. Like, obviously, um, I I heard a quote yesterday. Someone told me in the family, um, that you know you can make a bad movie out of a great script, but you can't make a good movie out of a bad script. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that um you guys agree with that. But I somewhat agree because if you have a fantastic script, you can paint splodge on your canvas. It, you can, you can't. Sometimes you can't articulate that script well. You can't transfer it well to the screen. The script may be fantastic, but the final product that you paint on your canvas can be just one hot mess. There's a lot that goes into transferring that great script. To what's on the screen and this show does that perfectly it acknowledges what's in the script and it carries that over with its cinematography with its sound design with its acting um and it's all fantastic but then i feel like sometimes once you have a bad script it's hard to make a great film at the same time as well or a great product um because it all starts in my opinion from the script and um at the moment we have this writer strike going on and i probably say my piece on it later but if you guys are listening to this segment now let me know what your thoughts are hey you know what school can wait why don't we take a little detour are we gonna go buy a car <laughs> kind of detour <laughs> You'll see. Dealership? Yeah! <laughs> I think it's time we got you your own car. What do you think? What? I, I think if you're going to buy me off, buy me off. <laughs> hey, get it for him. Get it for him. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Buy me the fuck off. Let's go. You got the challenger. Hey, you only live once, right? Hey, fuck it. Fuck it. Wow. <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. Uh, it's good looking. Didn't he want a green one? Good. I'm glad you like it. I, I do. Thank you, Dad. All right, you're welcome. I wonder how much that was at the time. Like 30, 40 grand US? Probably? Well, just like, I don't care. He probably brought the cash all up front. He's like, I'm ready to pay today. Interesting that it's red as well, which is what Walt has been so wearing a lot of lately. Yeah. You're actually here. <laughs> yeah, man. What, is there something about you that I don't know? Are you a former Navy SEAL? <laughs> you have to have your hands registered as lethal weapons. <laughs> Register this. All I'm saying 
is that do you not even question this? Do you really believe that you mean anything to these people? And I'm not trying to be insulting. I'm just trying to make you see things clearly. I see they can't outright kill me, but they don't want me getting high. I see this thing probably started as Gus getting Mike to babysit me. But you know what? I saved Mike from getting robbed. Even killed, maybe. <laughs> so maybe I'm not such a loser after all. They see a little bit of value in him. It's just a setup. What? what? This robbery that you stopped wasn't even real. I mean, think about it. Wow. The first day out guarding Mike, he steps out for one second. What happens? You immediately get robbed. You're such an asshole. Keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Like <laughs> you said, Gus can't kill you because of me. He knows I won't stand for it. He needs me, and he hates the fact that he needs me. So what does he do? He goes to work driving a wedge between you and me. You're an asshole. If he'd been there, you know it wasn't a setup. Wait a minute. How long did those guys chase you, huh? Because the way you describe it, they gave up pretty damn easy. No, no, this, this whole thing, all of this. Oh, it's so good. It's all about me. <laughs> I mean, would you say that Walt is self-centered and egotistical here, but it kind of does center around him and trying to sort of agitate him and I don't know, but I feel like I was about to say Walt has a lot on his plate at the moment. Like his mind has to comprehend so many things. He's got the relationship with Skylar he's trying to deal with. Obviously he's got the car wash now. He's got these things with Gus and Jesse and that that's really unpredictable at the moment because he doesn't know what day he's going to rock up to work and he could have a gun to his head. Like he, you get what I mean? Like anything could change in a matter of seconds. He has no control in terms of the situation with Gus at the moment. He can't even get a meeting with him. Um, and as well, I feel like you got the Hank situation. That's going to come crawling in slowly in my opinion. Opinion. But yeah, it's just mental at the moment. Is he? Uh, no, no, no. It, it, it's bueno. Um, uh, uh, por favor, por favor. Entra, entra. Sí. I'm out the loop on the muy Spanish, bueno, so. Muy bueno. sí, no, sí. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> yes, muy bueno. It's just this. No. No, 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 no. No podemos. No, no podemos. No podemos. No, no podemos. Sí, sí, siento. They don't even know the limits. Un momento, un momento. No puedo. Ahí no. Ahí no. Podemos. No. no, no. No podemos, tenemos que regresar al trabajo. No, 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 un momento, un momento. There is boundaries, Walt. <laughs> Yo necesito ayuda a, 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 a limpio dos oros máximo. No. What? Look, look, look. Universal language, dinero. No. What is that? <laughs> sí, sí, sí. What is that? Sí. What is that? It's one for you. Yeah, sí. sí. Presidente Grant, very important man. Sí. What is that? <laughs> see, see. What's this man on, man? Mas dinero this way. <laughs> I think we're good. I think we listen to you. Please, por favor, por favor. <laughs> are you watching this Gus you know what? Gus has other problems to deal with at the moment he's probably not even acknowledging what or what what what's doing I, I could be wrong but we saw at the beginning of the episode that poses a major problem with what's happening with his sort of supply runs if it is a major problem yo just imagine Skylar gonna come home to a new challenger like <laughs> You know, sometimes you do need drives to just clear your mind. Listen to music, chill, nice scenery. One of the best things, I swear, I love that stuff. I love going on a drive, night drive especially. Listening to music. And just thinking. Uh, what's the choices she about to make? What's she about to do? Uh, 
Nah, don't judge it off the coin flip. Whatever you're going to do, don't judge it off the coin flip. Leave Holly alone. <laughs> so, what's the plan? I just told you. <laughs> sit here and watch that house until one of our entrepreneurs pops his head out. Then we ask a few questions and get our property back. Sorry to burst your bubble, kid, but that's 90% of the job. Don't worry. I brought sandwiches. I feel like I'm going to increasingly like this relationship here. <laughs> it's going to warm me. I'm going to warm to it, sorry. Pimento cheese. How's that sound? I don't know. I low-key think Mike might be my favorite character in the show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? So they're selling, right? Maybe I'm looking to buy. Hey, Mike didn't stop him as well. He probably thinks, you know what? It's worth a shout. Get off the porch, asshole. Worth a try. <laughs> I love how they hold the camera and it's a long one take Good shot trouble, here. <laughs> Boy, there's something in there I need. And what would that be? I'm getting those pricks out of that house. Oh, your first attempt being such a wild success. You may know this whole PI sit in the car business. But I know meth heads. On the stock market, on the Breaking Bad stock market, I feel like Jesse's stock is increasingly going up. Regarding Gus. <laughs> They're going to rig up a GoPro to a shovel. Wow. So unique, honestly. <laughs> Just to get a shot for about five seconds. It's so creative. <laughs> I'm adjusting like Mike. <laughs> hey, uh, you mind taking over for a minute? Use Tucker as a decoy, go in the house. <laughs> Jesse could get killed here, but Mike is probably thinking this kid's ballsy right here. Tucker! The way this guy says Tucker. You think it's like a Call of Duty campaign, man? <laughs> it's like, the hell are you, Tucker? It's, hey, the hell are you? It's cool. Hey, I'm a, I'm a friend of Tucker's. What are you? Hey, let's go outside. I don't have enough for you. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. He looks familiar. Okay. I don't wanna, I don't wanna start any trouble. Trouble. Kinda looks like Michael. What's that mean? Trouble. No, no, looks no, like no, Michael no, Rooker. Cool, okay. I don't know if it's him, but we're good. What? You can't know that. What does that mean? Right. Tucker. <laughs> Yo, the makeup work is fantastic, and using the ray of sunshine um, that's coming through the window as he walks in and out of it, and you can see all the markings on his body. Great stuff. Hey, they got an extra bit of cash. Okay, where are you taking it? Come on, Tyrus, what are you doing? I'm putting them on a bus. Oh. Why? What bus? I'm gonna take them back to Honduras. Hey, wait a second. Wait a minute. 
this was my idea. Don't punish them. You tell Gus to blame me, not them. He does. <laughs> hey, you know who I thought Tyrus originally looked like? Um, when I first appeared on screen, I thought he looked like, um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. He looked like early from, um, the last Firefly episode. I don't know, June early. I think that was his name. Like the villain, the last Firefly episode. It was fantastic. I thought that was him. I thought it was the same actor, but I don't think it is. <laughs> I love the lighting on him. Oh, and the shadows. You know, I noticed this show does a lot with eating scenes. Um, when it can, it will use like an establishing shot outside of in our truck, gave away the cargo to a couple local nobodies. Like outside the actual like um scene, um, there will be a lot of external shots. Um, like I remember, for instance, when Walt was having dinner with Gus, there was a similar shot to this right here, where it was an establishing shot outside of Gus's house, and this one's outside the diner as well. And then they've angled this shot. I pause at the perfect time right here outside the diner where it captures both um, Mike and Gus in frame um, in through the window dividers right here. It captures Mike, um, the back of his head and Gus in frame and then Jesse in the right hand side of the frame. It's framed to perfection and you can hear the dialogue and see Jesse's reaction to their conversation as well. Very disciplined though, not keeping anything for themselves. It's all about sending a message. I know you're not really asking for advice. But let me hire 10, 15 more good operators. And we hit them back, hit them hard, hit them where they live. No. This war stays cold for now. Set up a meeting. Let's see what they have to say. I wonder if these guys have any connection to the cartel member he killed. How did he do today? At the end of season three. On one of the episodes of season three, I believe. I don't know. We've gone through this so fast. How did he do today? <laughs> Reviewing his performance. <laughs> I hear you can handle yourself. <laughs> I guess. Good night. Yo, Jesse not even... Excuse me. <laughs> Why me? I like to think I see things in people. I was about to say, Jesse not even trying and he gets an interaction with Gus. Walt is doing everything in the world to get his attention. He ain't budging. <laughs> she rocked up. I remember I was about to say, she rocked up. Honey, I'm home. Slow down. <laughs> The car is not going anywhere. <laughs> so that's yours, huh? <laughs> yeah, Dad got it for me. Oh, that was very nice of him. <laughs> yeah. I I know it looks like well awesome, but it's super safe. That that made sure, and I promise to always go the speed limit or below, way below, <laughs> and. It, it gets great gas mileage. So, Dad said I can take you around the block a few times. Is that okay? It, just around the block. Yeah. Just around the block. And be careful. Well, I will. <laughs> if I got one of those things. <laughs> hey. it, it, it's really, it's really great to have you home, Mom. I love how he's saying the opposite now to Skylar when it was Walt being Seriously, missed from the household okay. before. Okay. Yeah, if I owned one of those things, I'm taking that thing around the block for sure. In like three seconds. <laughs> We're doing around the block challenges. We're doing speed runs. I'm joking. I'm joking. I do not condone. <laughs> okay. I own a Toyota. Allow it. Best cars in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so buying that car that was protecting your family okay <laughs> uh, all right maybe it's a little flashy but he needed a car <laughs> <laughs> 
Yo. And I'm his father, and I should be able to get what he wants. Listen, notice how when Walt went to go touch Skylar there, she was like a little bit taken aback, like, get your hands off me. Like, she sort of didn't want him, uh, she didn't want um him to touch her because you saw that when Walt delivered his speech at the beginning of the episode, all that rage to Skylar, you know, that was like Heisenberg talking to Skylar. That was the dark side talking to Skylar. You saw she was quivering. She was shaking. She was trembling. That that, that That's Anakin talking to Padme, but dark side Anakin talking to Padme. And Padme is just taking her back like... Anakin, you're breaking my heart. Like, it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> that was Skylar in that situation. It goes back tomorrow. Oh, boo. So we'll crush him. Party pooper. That car directly contradicts our story. <laughs> you're so invested in protecting this family. It means protecting the story. What do you think the neighbors are going to say, Walt? What about Hank and Marie? How about the IRS? What were you thinking, Walt? I was thinking that I wanted to do something nice for my son. I know, but it overshadowed the whole overarching story thing. That's the problem. Don't send it back, man. Leave him. I just worry that he'll blame you for this. Once again, he'll blame his bitch mother for taking away what his loving father has given him. So, thanks for that. But you know what, Walt? Someone has to protect this family from the man who protects this family. I know I saw Oppenheimer last week, but damn, that was a nuke. Far out. Damn. Skylar? That was a, that, that was a fantastic, like, line to end the episode. And I guess that even Walt, even though Walt sort of had the high ground at the beginning of the episode, Skylar sort of took back the mantle, in my opinion, the way she ended that. Um, and I don't want... Walter Jr. to lose the car, but yeah, it's a situation where because of Walt's actions and not thinking about the consequences in terms of like the overarching story they're trying to go with, it sort of then, um, because of Walt doing this, Walt cleaning up the mess will hinder Skylar because, um, by him cleaning up the mess, is the blame will obviously ship to, Sky uh, to Skylar because Walt did this great thing for me, but at the same time, I'm the one who's making Walt return it. And it, it kind of sucks, but hopefully they can keep the car, man. L leave the kid. Like, it's a one lump sum payment. Who cares? I want it gambling, and I put it aside for my son's car. Why, why can't you just say that? I want some money gambling, and I put the money aside straight away for my son's car, um, in which he dearly wanted and has been talking about it forever. But I don't know. I don't know. But it's like, it's another fantastic episode. Like, it's so good. Like... Oh, drama-filled episode again, yet again. And I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. As always, been my your boy, Ellie Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.